All right, good afternoon, everyone, and happy new year. Uh, the time is now 1.07, and I call this meeting to order. Ms. Joanna, can you please read the notice of the public meeting? Chairwoman, this is a rescheduled meeting of the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission's 2023 annual meeting schedule. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the Senator Byron M. Baer Open Public Meetings Act. Notice of the meeting was provided to the Asbury Park Press, Atlantic City Press, Bergen Record, Courier Post, Star Ledger, and the Trenton Times on January 11th, 2022. The agenda and information regarding the Regarding the meeting was also posted on the CRC website. The meeting time and location was also been posted on the website of the New Jersey Cannabis Regulatory Commission and with the Office of the Secretary of the State. Thank you. Can you please take roll call? Commissioner Barker? Present. Commissioner Del Cid Coso? Present. Commissioner Nash? Present. Vice Chair Delgado? Present. Chairwoman Wayne Present. All members of the commission are present and we now have a quorum. The first order of business is for the commission to go into executive session to discuss legal matters and litigation updates. These are discussions that are not shared with the public. We believe the executive session should take about 30 minutes. Thank you. Um, and I do want to note for the public that there is one item on today's agenda that is to be discussed in executive session that the board will uh, later vote on. Uh, that is item number 7A on the agenda consideration of litigation matters in the matter of New Jersey Highlands LLC application for clinical registrant permit. Uh, that will be discussed during executive session. And then when the board returns from the executive session and gets to that agenda item, um, there, there the board will, uh, will take its vote on the matter. Um, so uh, with that, do I have a motion to go into executive session? Madam Chairwoman, I move that we go into executive session. Second that, Madam Chair. Moved by Vice Chair Delgado, <clears throat> excuse me, and seconded by Commissioner Barker. Is there any discussion on the motion to go into executive session? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Any abstentions? All right, hearing none, the motion passes. Um, the commission will now go into executive session. Uh, again, we accept, expect the executive session to last approximately 30 minutes. Uh, we will leave the live stream running during that time. And so we can expect to resume the open public portion of this meeting at approximately 1.40 p.m. Thank you for your patience, everyone. All right, welcome back everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, the executive session has ended. The time is now 1.43 p.m. and we will resume the public portion of this meeting. Ms. Joanna, can you please announce the next agenda item? Next up on the agenda is approving the minutes of both the commission's open session and executive session held on December 2nd, 2022. The meeting, the minutes have been shared and reviewed by the members of the commission prior to this meeting. Thank you. Um, if there are no questions or proposed changes to the meeting minutes, I will ask for a motion to adopt the meeting minutes for December 2nd, 2022. So moved, Madam Chair. Seconded. Moved by Commissioner Del Cid Coso and seconded by Commissioner Nash. Is there any discussion on this motion to adopt the meeting minutes? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor of approving the December 2nd minutes say aye. 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 All those opposed to 
approving the minutes say nay. Any abstentions? All right, the ayes have it and the motion is carried. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the chair's report. Thank you. Um, so once again, um, happy new year to everyone. I wish everyone a, a happy and healthy new year. Uh, so in December, I highlighted a few items that we can all anticipate to see this year, finalizing new regulations for personal use, continued expansion of the medicinal cannabis program, and more business openings. Uh, on, with respect to the personal use regulations, our final adoption on those rules, um, including additional cannabis business license classes will be coming soon. And additionally, our rule proposal concerning cannabis consumption areas, we will be published in the New Jersey Register, I believe on January 17th. Um, and at that point, it will be open for 60 day public comment, and that period will end on March 18th. Um, I also want to remind, take a moment to remind applicants of the process that we use to review and render decisions on applications. Uh, so after an application is submitted, staff must review the materials for completion, accuracy, and sufficiency. Now, because of the time that is needed for the CRC to sufficiently prepare, compile, and review these materials for an upcoming board meeting, application materials must get through all reviews by our staff well in advance. Uh, this allows commission staff and board members to have enough time to adequately prepare for a public board meeting. And it, minimizes, it's help, it helps us minimize any last minute changes or disruptions that can negatively affect an applicant. So I understand that some applicants when uh, pushing to get on a board meeting agenda have been uh, maybe a little less than courteous in their communication with our staff. Uh, so I'm going to chalk this up to being simply eager um, in their desire to get a license from the CRC. Um, but all applicants are reminded, however, that the CRC is required to adhere to certain standards. And unless and until documentation has been provided to CRC staff, applications cannot be considered for a vote by the board. Uh, the CRC is publicly posting which applications are under consideration at an upcoming board meeting. So please check our website um, on the public meeting page uh, for the list of applications that are under consideration. Those lists are hyperlinked. Um, in the agenda under the, the applications that are up for consideration. Uh, so that should help to um, provide some uh, relief to uh, applicants um, who maybe are a little unsure of where they are or whether or not they're up for consideration. And it should also help dispel any uh, fake reports uh, about who is allegedly going to be voted on. So keep that we will, um, we will keep posting those lists um, for, uh, you know, for forthcoming for future board meetings. So please continue to uh, check the, the webpage for more information. Uh, that is all I have for today's chair's remarks. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Next on the agenda is the executive director's report. Thank you. Um, and for this, I will turn it over to Director Brown to provide the, the report. Thank you, Chairwoman Wayne. So today um, I plan to cover uh, three uh, updates and then we'll be turning it over to our Director of Diversity and Inclusion, Wesley McWhite, for the fourth agenda item here. Uh, Going to provide a high-level budget overview mid-fiscal year. Um, with a particular focus on uh, expenditures that ha have occurred uh, under um, delegated authority by the, by the board, um, a licensing update, uh, 
uh, and then a, a, a specific update on adult use license applications and medicinal cannabis permits. And then finally, uh, Director McWhite will uh, take the reins here to uh, present the quarterly data report uh, on our adult use uh, uh, recreational awardees. Uh, so as far as the commission budget um, in fiscal year 2023, uh, the commission was allocated up to $17.2 million. Um, I note, I say up to because it's uh, dependent on uh, tax revenue. We need to see tax revenue continue to uh, come in and, and increase in order to hit that 17.2 million mark. Um, the CRC can only use, uh, can use a maximum of 30% of total cannabis revenues for our operating budget. Um, to date, uh, the commission has expended approximately 5.58 million. Um, the largest expenditure there remains salary and wages. And I'll note that uh, there are several uh, probably potentially large hits to the to the budget that that have not yet occurred uh, that we project to occur between now and the end of, end of the fiscal year. Um, what I'm going to focus on today are uh, approximately uh, some detail on approximately $156,700 uh, uh, in operational costs for system development, implementation, and professional and general services. Uh, so in detail there, uh, here's some totals uh, from uh, some purchase categories. Um, so first, uh, we've spent uh, in this fiscal year so far on operational costs. This includes office supplies, postage, security, telephone, uh, and other fees, $40,000 uh, for printing, uh, photocopying, and office supplies, $12,100. Uh, for data and information processing, $67,500. Um, information systems development and technology is $3,400. That's one anticipate growing uh, here. Uh, administrative and advisory services, $4,100. And subscriptions uh, and memberships, $22,000. Uh, it projects some, uh, a bit of growth in that category as well. Uh, so overall, we're doing well budget-wise. Um, we do anticipate some uh, expenditures that will happen between now and the end of fiscal year, uh, and we do need to uh, see tax revenue continuing to increase in order to uh, even have that, that $17 million uh, available for, for use. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. So now we'll move on to uh, license uh, update. Um, update on recreational cannabis business applications. We've now received uh, 1,538 applications for cannabis businesses. The lion's share of those remain conditional applications, but we are seeing uh, more and more annual uh, and uh, particularly encouraging more conditional conversion applications. Um, all those applications that we've received have uh, started review process. There are only 62 applications that have yet to advance from that initial priority assignment and review to completeness. And uh, the, the vast majority of those, uh, over 50 of them, the reason for that is because they have a deficiency with the priority designation they applied under, i.e. they applied as a social equity business but didn't submit the relevant documentation to prove it, or they applied as a diversely owned business but did not uh, apply, uh, did not include the uh, certification from the Division of Revenue and Enterprise Services, uh, which is required uh, at the time of submission. Um, as I mentioned, really encouraging news, more conditional license holders are applying to convert, convert to annual. Um, we've issued, uh, prior to this meeting, 911 condition, conditional license awards. Um, of those, 133 um, have gotten their conditional license uh, and, uh, and uh, have uh, submitted to convert to an annual license. That's roughly 15%. Uh, of all conditional license holders. And keep in mind that uh, the lion's share of the conditional licenses were really approved in the last quarter uh, of uh, 2022. Um, as far as what's up for consideration today, and as our chair mentioned, this is available on the website. We are now posting the list so you can see the names of the applicants uh, on the website under public meetings. There are 42 conditional applications up for approval, six conditional to annual conversion applications, and eight annual applications. As far as the total cohort of applications received, um, and this includes conditional and annual, and I'll, I'll remind folks that um, annual is the is the license type needed to operate. Um, there are 400 uh, class one cultivator applications, uh, 236 class two manufacturers, 
Um, we've received some applications for license types that we're not yet accepting for. Um, those are obviously rejected back to applicants. Um, they will be uh, accepted once those rules are adopted and, and uh, we go through the process to begin accepting those applications. Um, and then 866 retailers and 11 te uh, testing laboratories. Um, of the total applicant pool, 72% uh, self-attest is being diversely owned. 25% social equity and 43% and say they qualify for one of the three ways to qualify for an impact zone business, either located in, um, pledged to employ 25% uh, of their workforce from the nearest impact zone uh, or, um, uh, uh, or are from an impact zone. On the medicinal cannabis side, um, more 2019 RFA uh, awardees are becoming operational uh, and existing industries expanding uh, with new locations. So we now have Valley Wellness, which is uh, permitted and open and operating. It's an independent dispensary open in Raritan. Uh, Sweet Spot is a dispensary that's open in Voorhees. Uh, Breakwater uh, now has two medicinal only dispensaries. The second one is open in Roselle Park. Uh, Block uh, has opened a new medicinal only dispensary in Franklin. Uh, Hillview Med, uh, which is one of the cultivators from the 2019 RFA, uh, now has flour available uh, in the market. Uh, consumers can buy that's a new cultivator. Um, and uh, I can inform the board that uh, three and the public that three more dispensaries have passed inspection uh, and will be uh, getting permits and, and setting opening dates once those permits are issued and they have them in hand. So Proce continuing to process applications for recreational businesses, and we have not lost sight of uh, further expansion in the medicinal market. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Director McWhite to, to handle our quarterly data review. Thank you, Director Brown. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, Commissioners, uh, and the public. I am eager and excited to share with you our quarterly review data. Uh, but before I before we begin, I want to uh, thank Lynn, our Director of Data and Analytics, for his tireless commitment uh, to not just data, but telling the story of the diversity and inclusion, and inclusion that we are already seeing take shape in the cannabis industry in New Jersey. Um, I want to pull out three things uh, that I want to show you today. Uh, one is that a diverse and inclusive cannabis market, uh, the data is going to show rather that a diverse and inclusive cannabis market um, that looks like the diversity in New Jersey is already taking shape. Uh, this is good news. Uh, just not just for the industry, but for individuals who have been disp disproportionately impacted by the war of drugs. Uh, two, our prioritization process is working um, along with our social equity framework uh, and diversity framework. And in three, uh, we have a roadmap. We have a roadmap for ramping up outreach and stakeholder engagement and the types of outreach and engagement that can yield uh, even more data and more diverse participation in our cannabis market. So today I'm going to run through or walk through our recreational business application numbers, um, awardee applications, quarterly benchmarks, um, our alternative treatment center employee employment data, and some key takeaways. So first up, our social equity businesses. As new overall uh, applicants are submitted, social equity applications maintain a strong showing. So these are all of our applications as of December um, of 2022, 1,497, just a little under 1,500. Of those 375 are social equity and social equity applications are holding strong at 25%. Diversely owned businesses, similarly, similarly to our social equity businesses, um, as applicants are submitted on in our rolling basis, uh, diversely owned business applications hold strong, hold a strong and impressive 72% of the total number of our applications so far. We have really, really good news, extraordinarily good news um, about um, our social equity uh, applications. As you know, those are folks that live either live in economically disadvantaged areas of our state um, or who have prior marijuana convictions. And as you can see here, um, that holds at 16%. Uh, this is direct evidence that New Jerseyans most impacted by the war on drugs with prior marijuana convictions are submitting applications. Um, our social equity framework is working and there is growing participation from individuals from this key population uh, with even more room to grow. 
So awardee application uh, data. So turning to our awardees so far, uh, we have promising data to share that the CRC board is awarding licenses at a rate similar, similar to the number of applications uh, in our priority review process, such as justice involved, social equity, uh, black or brown uh, owners, um, or uh, women in this industry. So as you can see, out of the 36 licenses that we have awarded, two that aren't here are our testing laboratories, um, but out of the 36 that we have awarded, 10, 10 uh, annual license awardees have gone to social equity businesses. Those are folks that either live in economically disadvantaged areas um, or who have prior marijuana convictions, and we're going to show you a breakdown of those um, in just a second. And out of the 34, a whopping 24 four annual licenses have gone to diversely owned businesses. So out of our social equity businesses, one came in as an approved annual, so went straight to our annual process, and nine were improved, approved through our conversion process. Those that uh, majority ownership with previous marijuana convictions, uh, one came in at, through our approved annual process, um, and eight came in through our conversion to annual process, which lets us know that not only are social equity applicants filling, uh, applic license holders or business, potential business owners are filling out applications, they are also making it all the way through our licensure process, you know, and working in outreach and talking to members of the community in this space, what they want to see is representation. They want to know that the process is working. And as we can see, the, our process is working, particularly for those uh, that identify as social equity businesses and diversely owned businesses. And here we are, diversity owned businesses. 15 of those uh, came in straight through our approved annual process, and nine came in through our approved, were approved through the conversion to annual process. So we want to continue to monitor uh, disabled veterans and women and minorities separately, although written in statute, it brings together um, women and disabled veterans as one uh, key demographic in statute, not seeing less than 15% of those, but we heeded the call last summer um, of our disabled veterans to continue to monitor, monitor them separately. Um, the good news that we are seeing already with our disabled veterans from last year to this year is that more disabled veterans, because of our outreach and stakeholder engagement through the CRC, um, are applying for licensure in our process. And so we're going to continue to work with diversely owned business, uh, disabled veteran owned businesses, minority owned businesses, and women owned businesses to get them from the conditional phase into the conversional phase and hopefully in front of this board for approval. And as you can see with this key population um, data, um, uh, continuing to show you that as we continue to get our applications, um, or as this board rather approves uh, applications and gets to licensure, um, it is in lockstep with the number of applicants that have submitted an application to the CRC. So as you can see on this first block here, conditional submission for justice involved folks, those who have prior marijuana convictions uh, stands at 17% and their conditional approval is the same. And they are also, a part of our annual submission and annual approval process as well. The numbers I want you to really take, pay close attention to are the annual approval numbers and the conditional approval numbers. These are uh, head above water when it comes to the national ownership level with Hispanic or Latino ownerships in this industry at the national level standing at a little less than 6%. Um, and Black or African American ownership stands at even less than that at about 4%. And so as we continue to work, we're going to continue to push these numbers by getting more individuals from this community, from these communities, justice involved, minority owned, Black or African American, Hispanic or Latino, to apply for licensure um, and give them the support that they need to get all the way to, uh, to get to in front of this board um, and open up a business. So our quarterly data benchmarks, we are meeting them. <laughs> not only are we meeting them, but we are exceeding them. I think one of the, not I think, I know, one of the first goals um, that I had 
is to make sure that we not only meet these benchmarks, but we we exceed them. And so we're doing just that. And as more people, you know, apply for licensure, as more people get in front of this board, um, as more people tap into our wraparound services with uh, with other state agencies that are stepping up to do this work, um, these numbers are only going to increase. For minority-owned businesses, 34% um, uh, so far of our awardees um, are minority owned, which means we are over 19% of our original benchmark of 15. The same with women or disabled veterans, they stand at 39%. They are over their statutory benchmark of 24%. So this is great work so far, but we certainly, certainly want to continue to see these numbers rise. APC employment data. So as many of you know, we've discussed here, um, we've discussed in many different forms that coming this year will be a social equity report card where we will be monitoring um, expanded ATCs and alternative treatment centers and really all businesses, um, monitoring and, and supporting and collaborating with them on the work of social equity, diversity and inclusion. And so these next numbers that you are going to see are a snapshot of current diversity numbers for employment through our alternative alternative treatment centers here in New Jersey. And as that report card uh, comes out, um, and as uh, expanded uh, alternative treatment centers uh, send to this office, the Office of Diversity and Inclu Inclusion, monthly reports, they are updating us on not just their employment numbers, but what they're doing to make sure that their um, sites, whether retail or cultivation sites, look like the communities that they are in, um, job fairs that they are having all over the state, expungement clinics and job fairs tied together. Um, and we just want to make sure that we are continuing to monitor these kinds of numbers. I'm happy to, to share that many of our ATCs and expanded ATCs are translating educational materials so that members of the Hispanic or Latino community can feel seen. Um, and that it normalizes cannabis for them here in this state as well. And so much work to do, um, but we're excited that the plans are already in place and being implemented to make sure um, that we see true diversity, not just in ownership, but also um, in, in employees numbers as well. And then overall breakdown um, is of uh, Self-identity demographics, race and, race and ethnicities um, for other affinity groups. Um, data yet, not yet available speaks to the fact that we are uh, launching or have launched um, an uh, employee ID service where some of this information uh, will be collected. And so as more um, ATCs, expanded ATCs, um, get into the system and update the system with their employees, uh, this data not yet available number will come down and we'll see more diversity in our employee numbers as well well. So some key takeaways. Uh, one third of all applicants are social equity. I, I can't say that enough. <laughs> one third of our applicants that live here in New Jersey or live in an economically disadvantaged area or who have prior marijuana convictions are not just applying for license, uh, licenses, but they're actually becoming coming before this board and receiving their awards as well. Two thirds, a whopping two thirds of all of our applicants um, are diversely owned businesses. Of all applicants, 50% are majority women owned, uh, over 50% 50, 50 are minority owned, and we have seen an increase in disabled veterans applications, and we want to continue to see that increase and get them all the way to, in front of this board um, and get their licenses as well. So our key takeaways, 67% of our awardees are diversely owned, 28% of our awardees are social equity, and key populations are well represented in this industry already. So here's what I know, Madam Chair, Vice Chair, Director Brown, and really members of the public, our process is working. Our social equity framework, our diversity and inclusion process is working. And that with time, we are gonna to continue to grow these numbers in a way that continue to reflect the great diversity of this state. We also want to continue to encourage applicants and awardees to sign up for New Jersey's Business Action Center's Cannabis Training Academy, which will be launching in the first half of this year. They are anticipating um, at least 10,000 New Jerseyans that are just general public folks that just want more information about the industry to conditional license holders, to conditional awardees that need to convert and annual application applicants as well. 
um, will be a part of not just a training academy, but really a community of folks that want to learn how to get into this industry. And with this particular wraparound service, we are going to see an increase in application numbers, and we will see an increase in our conversion to annual numbers as well. Um, and also working through our interagency work groups with the Economic Development Authority of New Jersey, who last month um, announced a grant program for specifically for social equity folks. And we're really excited to continue to work with EDA as we have with all other state agencies to continue to build upon these wraparound services to increase our diversity numbers and our applications and eventually our awardees. Um, we say it all the time. We see an increase in, in our out. We will see an increase in our outreach and stakeholder engagement with current and potential social equity applicants. We do want to see more folks uh, with prior convictions um, not only know about this opportunity but take this opportunity to fill out an application. And with the train, coming training academy, we're going to see, we're going to see that. Um, and lastly, continue to strategically engage minority women and disabled veterans communities. We say it all the time, but this is a call to the community in 2023 to really step up to the plate and engage us in ways that you have not before. We're going to continue to push into the community to make sure that we're fighting things like stigma, misinformation about our process, um, and to let folks know and share these data numbers with folks that cannabis business ownership licensure in New Jersey can be real for you from key populations. And it's going to take time, but the time that we have put in as an agency has worked and we're going to continue to build on that. It's going to take time, you know, turning back some of the negative impacts on the war on drugs. But from the data that we are seeing so far, Madam Chair, uh, commissioners, we are headed in the right direction. And the victories that we are seeing, we're only going to continue to grow on as an agency and as a truly diverse and equitable industry in New Jersey. And with that, I turn it back over to the chair. Thank you very much, uh, Director McWhite and uh, Director Brown. Um, and I also wanna echo Director McWhite's uh, acknowledgement and, uh, um, and thanks for uh, Lynn on our team um, for doing such great work with this data um, and being able to provide this data for, for us and for the public. So thank you all. Uh, Ms. Joanna, can you please, oh, I'm sorry, before I, um, before we move on to the next item, Director Brown, is there anything else you wish to cover in the um, executive director's report? Madam Chair, that, that about covers it. And thank you to Director McWhite. And I will also echo uh, thanks to uh, uh, Len Terranova, uh, the, the director of our Office of uh, Data and Business Analytics, or ODB for short. Great, wonderful. Um, all right, so with that, uh, Ms. Joanna, can you please announce the next agenda item? Thanks, Chairwoman Wainu. Next on the agenda is consideration of litigation matters on the matters of New Jersey Highlands LLC application for a clinical registrant permit. Thank you. Uh, so we have this, as I mentioned earlier, this is an item that was discussed by the board during the executive session. Um, so uh, we will skip any public summaries and discussion there. Um, do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution concerning the settlement of appellate division docket number A396621 in the matter of New Jersey Highlands LLC application for clinical registrant permit? Uh, consistent with the discussion had and recommendations made during executive session. Madam Chair, I move that we uh, move the resolution. Moved by Vice Chair Delgado. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Del Cid Coso. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, Ms. Joanum, can you please call the vote? Commissioner Barker? Nay. Commissioner Del Cid Coso? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Commissioner Delgado? Yes. Vice Chair Delgado? Yes. <laughs> Chair I, only answer to Vice, I only answer to Vice Chair. <laughs> Chairwoman <laughs> Wayne New? Yes. The motion has passed. 
Next up on the agenda is the consideration of conditional licensing. Thank you, Director Brown. Can you please provide a summary um, of the applications and staff's recommendations on the applications received? Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, as I go through the summary, um, if you wouldn't mind just uh, flipping through the slides and just keeping the, you know, keep each slide up for, uh, uh, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, uh, I will note that the list of applications up for consideration is also on our website. Uh, so if you don't see it on the slide, um, you can uh, you can go see it there. Um, so these uh, <clears throat> you have 42 conditional applications up for consideration by the Cannabis Regulatory Commission. Um, like all of our conditional applications, they were uh, assigned priority based on application type that was verified uh, based on the application uh, information submitted. They were assessed for completeness. Uh, they were scored. Um, these applications have scored sufficiently high to move forward. Um, they were then reviewed for qualification limitations uh, and an initial uh, proposed financial management uh, and agreement review. Um, <clears throat> we conducted internal quality control, uh, and then they are here uh, ready to be recommended uh, for approval to the CRC board. Um, so this is another 42 conditional uh, applications. They have all uh, been uh, the priority has been verified. They've been deemed complete. They've scored sufficiently high. Um, we've reviewed them for uh, limitations, qualification, and initial financial and management agreement review, and they are recommended for approval by the CRC. Chairwoman Wainu, back to you. Thank you, Director Brown. Um, now that we've all had a chance to, to hear a little bit uh, from Director Brown and see these the names of these 42 um, conditional license applicants, do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution for consideration of conditional license applications for class one cannabis cultivator, class two manufacturer, and class three cannabis retailer licenses. Madam Chair, I move that we have approved the resolution concerning the conditional license applications. Moved by, Commissioner, moved by Commissioner Barker, seconded by Commissioner Nash. Thank you. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing none, Ms. Joanna, can you please call the vote? Commissioner Barker? Aye. Commissioner Del Cosa? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Vice Chair Delgado? Yes. Chairwoman Wainu? Yes. The resolution passes. Next item for consideration are conditional conversion applications. Thank you. Uh, Director Brown, can you please provide a summary of staff's recommendations for the applications to convert a conditional license to an annual license? Absolutely. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, so for, um, uh, for conditional, uh, like conditional licenses, uh, these are assessed for priority. Um, they are assigned a priority based on what they uh, apply as. Um, that priority is then verified. Uh, they're reviewed for completeness. Um, they are then scored. Um, and there's uh, quite significantly more scoring sections for uh, conditional conversions than there are for conditional applicants themselves. Um, they are then, those that are deemed uh, score sufficiently high to move forward, um, are then move on to uh, limitations, uh, financial management agreement review, uh, as well as uh, qualification review. And, and for those who are moving through this uh, process, that's essentially when you get to uh, investigations. Um, and uh, in investigations, they do a, a qualification review, uh, fingerprints, 
um, assess against the, uh, you know, assess any criminal history, um, uh, as well as um, uh, vet the applicants against our regulations for qualification. Um, additionally, uh, our investigators uh, work to identify the source of funds uh, where applicable. Um, and then finally, uh, those that are score sufficiently high um, have been appropriately investigated and deemed, uh, or at least uh, initially deemed qualified uh, by staff um, up to the board ultimately. Uh, we then conduct quality control um, and make a recommendation to the CRC board for approval. Um, we have six applications up for consideration today, uh, all conditional conversions. And as I noted uh, in my overall application overview, we're seeing really encouraging things in that more, the, more conditional license license holders are applying to convert. Um, so we're going to see more of these in the future. Uh, so there's six. Um, uh, and if you don't mind fl uh, flipping to the list itself, um, these applications uh, have been uh, assigned to priority. It's been verified. They've been deemed complete. They have been scored sufficiently high uh, to be considered by the by the board. Um, they have been investigated and uh, initially deemed qualified uh, and uh, have been uh, assessed and, and quality controlled and are recommended for approval by the CRC board for a conversion from a conditional license to an annual license. Thank you, Director Brown. Do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution? Um, concerning applications to convert from a conditional to annual class one cannabis cultivator, class two cannabis manufacturer, and class three cannabis retailer licenses. Madam Chair, I move to adopt the resolution concerning uh, the applications to convert from conditional to annual class one, class two, and class five licenses. Moved by Commissioner Del Cid Coso. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Nash. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing no discussion, Ms. Joinum, can you please call the vote? Commissioner Barker? Nay. Commissioner Del Cid Coso? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Vice Chair Delgado? Yes. Chair Women Way New? Yes. The resolution passes. Next item for consideration are annual license applications. Thank you. Director Brown, can you please provide a, a summary of staff's recommendations on these applications? Yes, thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, today, the commission has eight uh, applications for annual licensure uh, that are recommended for approval. Um, the process here is pretty much uh, exactly the same as with the conversion, except uh, here, they have applied directly for an annual license uh, instead of uh, going first uh, to a conditional. Um, they are assigned a priority. It's verified. They are uh, assessed for completeness, scored, um, and the scoring criteria is slightly different for an direct annual licenses uh, versus conditional conversions because a lot of that is written into statute. Um, those that are scored sufficiently high are reviewed for uh, any regulatory limitations, financial management, um, and ultimately for qualification, which is, includes a criminal history background check, as well as a financial investigation. Uh, we conduct quality control. Um, and then uh, those that uh, are, are ready, uh, we believe are ready for board approval are then recommended uh, to the board for, for approval. Um, so here we have eight applications. And if you could flip to the list, uh, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so these eight applications are uh, recommended for approval. They have been, uh, their priority designation has been verified. Um, they've been deemed complete. They've scored sufficiently high uh, and they've uh, uh, so, uh, initially been uh, deemed qualified and uh, are recommended for approval uh, by the CRC uh, commissioners. All right. Do I hear a motion on the adoption to, um, sorry, do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution uh, considering the annual license, I'm sorry, annual, annual cannabis business applications for class one cannabis manufacturer, class two cannabis, I apologize. I'm gonna start over. It's Friday afternoon, it's been a long week. All right, do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution 
considering annual cannabis business applications for class one cannabis cultivator, class two cannabis manufacturer, and class five cannabis retailer licenses. Madam Chair, I move to approve the resolution for consideration of annual applications for class one, class two, and class five cannabis licenses. Moved by Commissioner Nash, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Del Cid Coso. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing no discussion, Ms. Joannam, can you please call the vote? Commissioner Barker? Nay. Commissioner Del Cid Coso? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Vice Chair Delgado? Yes. Chair Women Way No? Yes. The resolution passes. Next item for consideration of ownership change application for Columbia Care. Thank you, Ms. Joinum. Uh, Director Brown, can you please provide a summary um, of staff's recommendations on this ownership transfer application? Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I'll just note for a moment, uh, if my math is correct, uh, and it is a Friday afternoon, and I'm not the best at math, but I, I, I do believe that that would make 50 uh, annual license awards uh, issued by the CRC here uh, with that last approval, uh, 36 and 14, I believe. Uh, if I'm wrong, someone correct me. Um, so I do believe we've now hit the 50 uh, mark as far as awarded annual license, inclusive of both uh, conditionals converting to annuals as well as uh, annual applications. So uh, well done all there. Much more to come uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the coming year here. We have a lot, of, uh, lot more applications to get through uh, and get moved off our plate and into the market. Um, so uh, before, uh, up for consideration for the board is a change of ownership. Um, this is a, a, a Columbia Care uh, is proposed to um, be acquired by Cresco Labs. Um, uh, they applied for a, a change of ownership under our regulations. Um, they've complied uh, with our background investigation, including uh, criminal history background checks um, and, uh, you know, uh, the related financial investigation. Um, Cresco Labs does not have any other permits or licenses here in the state of New Jersey, so there's no um, uh, caps on uh, licenses, either in the recreational market or in the medicinal market that are implicated here. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward transfer from a uh, transfer of ownership with Cresco Labs assuming uh, ownership of uh, Columbia Care. Um, given that they've complied with our regulations um, and they are, uh, um, uh, you know, no, no, uh, information that would lead us to uh, yield a negative recommendation has been uncovered. Uh, we recommend approval of this ownership transfer uh, and approval of Cresco Labs to take over uh, ownership of Columbia Care. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution approving the transfer of ownership of Columbia Care New Jersey LLC and expanded alternative treatment center to Cresco Labs? Madam Chair, I move to approve the resolution for the transfer of Columbia Care to Cresco Labs. Second. Moved by Commissioner Nash and seconded by Vice Chair Delgado. Is there any discussion on this motion? Madam Chair, yes. Just um, Commissioner Delsig Coso, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to be brief and just say that I'm pleased that Cresco Labs is going to be honoring the labor peace agreement and is going to continue the relationship with labor unions. I'm also pleased that they are going to be honoring and continuing to move forward with the Columbia Care Social Equity Plan. So I just wanted to be short and, and make that statement for the record. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Del Cid Coso. Any other discussion on this motion? Hearing none, Ms. Joannum, can you please call the vote? Commissioner Barker. Okay. Commissioner Del Cid Coso? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Vice Chair Delgado? Yes. Chairwoman Wainu? Yes. The resolution passes. Next item for consideration of name change application for Oceanfront Holdings LLC and New Jersey Pharmacan LLC. 
Thank you, Ms. Shonam. Can Director Brown, can you please uh, provide a summary of staff's recommendation on these applications? Absolutely. Thank you, Chairwoman. Um, we have two applications for name change. One is Oceanfront Holdings LLC to uh, downtown Flower with uh, that exact uh, uh, capitalization uh, and uh, New Jersey Pharmacan LLC uh, to Urban Dispensary um, with that exact uh, capitalization and punctuation. Um, and uh, they have submitted everything uh, that they need to. So they've uh, registered with the, you know, appropriately uh, registered with the state. They've submitted that. They've submitted uh, the relevant documentation that our team needs pursuant to regulations and therefore are, are recommended uh, for approval here. Um, these are both two uh, 2019 uh, RFA awardees. Thank you, Director Brown. Uh, do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution approving these applications for to change the business name. Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the resolution to change the business names. Moved by Commissioner Barker. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Del Cid Coso. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing no discussion, Ms. Joannum, can you please call the vote? Commissioner Barker. Commissioner Barker. Commissioner, you were on mute. A lot of Friday funnies going on. Just gonna put that out there. I was on mute talking to myself. Aye. Commissioner Del Cid Coso. Yes. Commissioner Nash. Yes. Vice Chair Delgado. Yes. Chairwoman Wei New. Yes. The resolution passes. Next item for consideration is the delegation of authority to the permitting and licensing committee to review and act on extension requests. Thank you. Uh, Director Brown, can you please provide a summary of staff's recommendation for this delegation of authority? Yes, thank you, Chairwoman. Um, so up for consideration here is a resolution to delegate authority um, from the full uh, CRC Board of Commissioners to the Permitting and Licensing Committee, uh, the members of which are uh, Chairwoman Wainu and uh, Commissioner Del Cid Coso, uh, as, as well as uh, uh, staff who provide support to that, uh, but do not have a voting role on the meeting or on the, uh, on the committee. Um, and uh, what this uh, delegation of authority would do would delegate authority to that committee to act on uh, license extensions of deadlines per, related to uh, licenses uh, and permit awards. So for example, uh, in December, the board extended all um, 2019 RFA dispensary awardees. Um, and similarly, uh, the board has extended conditional license uh, awardees. Um, and there is a, uh, although we haven't had to do this yet, there, there is a 365 day op, uh, requirement to become operational in our regs for uh, annual uh, uh, license awardees under uh, recreational uh, recreational cannabis rules. So this would delegate authority to the permitting and licensing committee to act on those extensions, uh, to set up a process to uh, with staff uh, to accept those uh, requests for extensions, review them, uh, and ultimately make a determination on, on whether or not to grant the extension. Um, this will uh, enable us uh, collaboratively and, and particularly this committee to uh, streamline the approach of uh, approving extensions uh, related to deadlines uh, related to license awards or that are otherwise in regs. Um, it'll make it easier for us to move on these in a timely manner uh, and, and you know, hopefully reduce the need to do blanket uh, uh, extensions and, and focus in more granular on uh, specific details. Um, so uh, we do recommend that this is uh, approved by uh, the CRC Board of Commissioners and that uh, authority to make these determinations is delegated to the Permitting and Licensing Committee. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm sorry. <laughs> Continuing the Friday funnies here. Uh, thank you, Director Brown. <laughs> uh, I think everybody's just eager to, to get started on the long weekend. Um, do I hear a motion to adopt the resolution uh, delegating authority to the commission's permitting and licensing committee to review and approve requests for extensions of permitting and licensing deadlines? 
Madam Chair, I move to approve the resolution for delegation of authority to the Permitting and Licensing Committee to review and approve requests for extensions of permitting and licensing deadlines. Moved by Commissioner Nash. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Vice Chair Delgado. Is there any discussion on this motion? Hearing no discussion, Ms. Joannum, can you please call the vote? Commissioner Barker? Aye. Commissioner Del Cosa? Yes. Commissioner Nash? Yes. Vice Chair Delgado? Yes. Chairwoman Wayne? Yes. The resolution passes. Next, we have the open public comment period. Um, as we uh, head into the, the public comment period, I just want to congratulate all of the uh, license award winners today, those conditional and annual. Um, it is, and I also want to note that it's uh, quite refreshing to, to see um, some original creative names for our cannabis businesses. Um, as which was in stark contrast to how things have historically been, but um, happy to see some of those fun, engaging business names. Um, now, as we head into the public comments, um, I want to remind that members of the public can submit comments to the commission in writing uh, before, during, or after any public meeting uh, via our website. You go to www.nj.gov slash cannabis slash meetings. Uh, the deadline for submitting written comments for today's meeting is five o'clock on Tuesday, January 17th. Written comments will be shared with the commission members and be made public along with the meeting minutes. Now, uh, speakers during this afternoon's public comment period will be limited to three minutes. Uh, so please be mindful of the, the time constraints. Please note that the comment period is meant to give people an opportunity to address the commission about matters that the commission should be aware of. Uh, this is not a space for people to simply market or advertise their own private businesses. So please keep your remarks focused on matters that pertain to the commission's work or items that the commission should be aware of. Uh, all those who have been signed up, um, Director Blake will call your names out three at a time three or five at a time. Um, when it is your turn to speak, Director Blake will ask you to turn on your microphone. Uh, now to ensure that the meeting minutes are accurate, please state your name before, um, before you deliver your comments. And please make sure that your name as it appears on Zoom matches the name that you used to sign up to, to, to speak today. Um, if your name does not match what you used to sign up, it will be difficult for us to identify you as a registered speaker. Um, and we want to make sure that those who have registered to speak have an opportunity to do so. So uh, please double check your name, that your name uh, as it appears on Zoom matches what you used to register. If it does not, quickly exit the Zoom platform and then come back in. That should allow you uh, the chance to write your name. Um, and if you are using an older version of Zoom, I believe, I think sometimes individuals may have uh, trouble uh, getting that, that prompt to pop up when they, uh, when they um, launch the Zoom meeting. Um, but make sure that your name matches what you used to sign up to speak. With that, I will turn it over to Director Blake to call on our first speakers. Good afternoon, everyone. I am going to temporarily lower the hands of all those who have them raised at the moment so that I am a better able to see the names as I call them. Since we have a short list today, I will be doing three at a time. And the first three are Agri Bias, Anthony Russo, and Al Ashley Walsh. That is Agri Bias, Anthony Russo, and Ashley Walsh. Ashley, go ahead. Hello. Good afternoon, Madam Chairman and the commissioners. I'm Ashley Walsh. I am the CEO of Garden Organics, a New Jersey certified woman business and a social equity applicant. 
We received our conditional permit in the first announcement of awards back in March of 2022 for cultivation and manufacturing.